Thanks a lot for making yourself available. Um, let's go back to the bid. How competitive with the bid? There were a lot of other people bidding, of course. What was done to ensure that St. Lucia got their nose in? Well, thank you so much for having this interview uh, on a work day, as you would say, and you would get the ambience of work happening at the Darren Sammy Cricket Ground, and we anticipated that we would have had a lot of work. And uh, I, I appreciate that question because a lot of work went in before we could have had this work at the Darren Sammy, and the bid was very important for us. There was a lot of collaboration with the Ministry of Tourism, um, the Prime Minister, the Minister of Finance, and of course the Ministry of Youth Development and Sport. St. Lucia has a really unique tourism product. Uh, we are a simply beautiful island. Uh, we have all the dynamics that would make a competitive nation ready to go for a World Cup. In terms of our tourism product, in terms of our availability of rooms, in terms of the availability of all the logistics for hosting a World Cup. And so, the collaboration with the Ministry of Tourism in providing that information on our capacity to welcome the rest of the world in a very effective way to the community of Grosley and wider communities of Castries and all of St. Lucia was a huge part of the bid. And we were very confident going in that we had that capacity locked down. And having and done 2007. Absolutely. And then the, 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 the Women's World yeah, Cup. Yeah, yeah. I've watched this very recently. And of course, St. Lucia has had a reputation of having the logistics, the venue, having the tourism aspect available on lock. And so we had no doubt in our mind that we were very competitive. And uh, as fate would have it, uh, West Indies and uh, the ICC saw it fit in to ensure that St. Lucia indeed hosted the World Cup. We got the bid, ICC arrived. Mm -hmm. What were they requesting of your government? They were requesting every single modern adjustment that we could have made. And uh, you would see the likes of a Jamaica deciding uh, in the final analysis that they were just not ready to uh, pretty much adhere to all the requirements. Uh, you would see the likes of Dominica pulling out later on. Uh, but St. Lucia having a very, the fundamentals of our economy and the sports and of course our tourism product, being in a position that we were comfortable with all the requests. Of course from Spidercam in terms of the new technology, in terms of videography, the requirements for the lights, requirements for uh, the addition of media coming into St. Lucia for the World Cup. Uh, vast they made recommendations in terms of the change rooms for the, for the athletes um the media center the we'll, parking we'll get there soon absolutely and so, so the icc gave you a list a checklist a very then, comprehensive checklist and then you called in your contractors we called in an entire team we realized that given the time constraints because we really waited uh, for whether or not saint lucia was going to host cricket world cup firstly and secondly what part we would play in terms of the fixture, because uh, you would appreciate that uh, making accommodations for England being in St. Lucia would be significantly different from uh, we making preparation for uh, like just a, a Zimbabwe audience or you know just uh, a, a UAE audience. And so we really had to wait again to find out who we were hosting, who were we preparing for. And so once we found out that there was a huge possibility that England and India would be in St. Lucia during the business end of the tournament, we really committed to ensuring that we did all what we could to ensure that the Darren Sammy Cricket Grounds, Grosley Playing Field, and of course the Middlefield Park were available uh, and, meet, and met all the requirements of Cricket West Indies and ICC. Right, let's go down the list, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing I noticed living close by mm -hmm. is the Johnson Charles roof went. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that entire um, adjustments that we made to, to, to all, Absolutely. We had a situation when we entered that we had, uh, I think, 27 leaks. I, I can't remember the exact amount. I had 27 or 47 leaks, which really meant that we had to do some comprehensive work on the roofing system at the Dan Um We inherited that. So we realized that it would have been embarrassing for us to host Cricket World Cup and for water to be falling on the heads of media personalities and some of the cricketers and the visitors from around the world. So we took off the roof. We took off and we did a completely new roof at Darren Sammy. And anybody who's following roofing knows that it's a very costly venture. And that's in the private boxes also, the, the, media, the media boxes, the players' pavilion. Players' pavilion. 
every single roof had to be pulled out. Uh, now, of course, we did Johnson Charles first, uh, because simply because we knew in terms of priority, this is where fans go very early, and so that's we just the, pulled it out. That's the mass stand. That's the mass stand. That's the popular stand. That's where all the entertainment really happens. And so we pulled it out, and we ensured that you know we dealt with it, and we dealt with all the other roofing components and metal Next question, what you did with the players' pavilion mm -hmm. and uh, the seating above it? The players' pavilion is a very important aspect of what ICC wanted. They wanted a modern look. They wanted the players to feel comfortable. They wanted us to use the technology in terms of television and internet or within the players' pavilion because you'd appreciate this is where all the analysis would happen when the teams come in. And so we have a modern players' pavilion being um, constructed. Um, the sitting area on top is, is normally reserved for VIP and for individuals coming in to enjoy that sort of ambience. And so we had to make every effort to make this place as classy as possible. Uh, the St. Lucia Cricket Association have their offices held right there as well, and so we had to make sure it was comfortable for them as well. Very impressed with the modern look that the players, and uh, not just the cricketers uh, from this World Cup, but going forward, the players who would be using uh, for West Indies and, of course, the local cricket finals would enjoy a modern um, players' pavilion. The press box, uh, that's been enlarged uh, and modernized? We've been told that we are going to have over 140 uh, media personalities on island. And it meant that we had to have expanded the media area, make it more comfortable and, again, modernize it. People must uh, appreciate the fact that the Diamond Tommy Cricket Grounds was opened in 2007 and uh, the rest of the world would have made many adjustments in terms of the technology uh, for hosting events and so we had to take the position that we had to open it up uh, make it more comfortable and of course most of all suited for media personalities to get that story and beam it to the rest of the world from a cricket point of view mm -hmm. the square has been re redone absolutely the square has been totally redone and i know this is where kent crafton thrives uh, he looks for every opportunity to upgrade our square and ensure that it is uh, world class. Uh, we have no doubt that the, the conditions at the Daranzami lends itself to uh, any cricketer. Uh, a fast bowler can get what, what he wants if he pitches in the right area. Uh, it will come nicely to the bat for uh, a competent batter. Uh, somebody who's bowling spin can get some good bounce at, at times at Darren Zami. And so it's really a cricket paradise. Anybody who enjoys cricket, who studied cricket, would know that Darren Zami really lends itself to good cricket. And that's our expectation from our curator, Kent Crafton. I notice you've joined the, the batter. <laughs> Simply because uh, we, uh, we, we are living in a, a time where we have so many women involved in sport and so I, I'm somebody who is very sensitive to the plight and uh, even when we had the launch of our High Performance Centre, I, I made it a, a point to ensure that uh, the female cricketers that were doing very well, uh, they were part of our high performance. And, uh, and I guess in addition to that, we must realize that I'm a parent of two girls. <laughs> so I've moved, uh, I've moved on from batsmen to say in the neutral, gender neutral yeah. batter. Well, I, I like batter mm -hmm. for the female players, yes. but I like batsmen. I mean, I can't yeah. think of calling Headley a batter. Or a yes, like yes, I, yes, I, yes. Which is a batter. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, a tough one. Mm -hmm. Have everybody been asking? Mm -hmm. The lights. The lights. The, lights. the lights have been of concern to anybody who's followed CPL. And I remember the analysis for a couple, for about three years was that there were a lot of job catches at Darren Sami. And uh, initially, it, the, the thought process was that perhaps the St. Lucia team was just not competent in catching. And then we saw that other teams were having some difficulties. And so the light levels, especially when you're using fossil fuels, it would go down after a couple of years and so uh, the, the lights became uh, more yellow more orange and uh, we realized that at the end of the time we needed to at the end of the day we needed to transition from a fossil fuel into leds and of course then solar lights for the dying you indeed to use solar absolutely i am uh, as a, a sports minister who believes in uh, energy efficiency and alternative energy in sport that is the transition we are making in terms of our, our reduction of any sort of our carbon footprint on this uh, beautiful globe that we have. And so you would see a lot of efforts in terms of establishing a system uh, to ensure that we rainwater harvest and the transition, as I said, from fossil fuels into LEDs and then solar lights for Dan Sami and most of our stadium solution. Can you repeat? 
rain water harvest because the bill is huge right now. It's, it's huge and uh, you would appreciate that once you have a venue the size of a Darren Sami and you have grass with the beauty of Darren Sami that water will be used almost daily and of course we have more than 14 uh, toilets in terms of washrooms that really do we do not need purified water for flushing toilets and so this is the idea behind ensuring that you know we, we use alternative forms so we have the stored energy uh, the, the stored water and use it for the washrooms and for the surface at Darren Sandy. Back to the lights, okay, mm -hmm. new lights um, using solar, mm -hmm. what happens to the old lights? Uh, <laughs> I don't want you to tell me where it will go, yes. but the lights are there. Definitely, we, we still have use for them, we still believe that they, the lights are currently they're good, they're good enough for the next five to ten years at other venues that are smaller, you would appreciate based on the size, and we have a number of community fields that uh, the community really want to ensure that they have their programs for young people and of course those who are professionals as well working uh, beyond the hours of six An and seven of, of, yeah. activities and, and programs so programs are very important for the development of sport the display screen and the scoreboard changes very very important developments at Darren Sami we had some issues with our replay screen simply because of the hurricane season and the different elements that the replay screen went through and so we had to rent uh, replay screen for a number of the activities at the Darren Sami and I'm pleased that the Korean government they've come on board through the Ministry of External Affairs and I want to thank them for the donation of a brand new state-of-the-art modern replay screen uh, ahead of the World Cup. Uh, in terms of the scoreboards we've, we've ensured that we have two electronic scoreboards one on the western side and the southern side and so uh, everybody at the Darren Sami every patron will have the opportunity to keep in touch with the scores and the development in terms of how the game is progressing. If the late Claude Guillaume was, al <laughs> was alive, he'll be, he'll be amazed at what you've done with the scoreboard. Absolutely. I think it's something that, uh, that as, a, as a young minister, you really want to see the, the technology at your venue. You really want to enjoy and give the patrons the opportunity to, to get proper replays. You know, a, a screen that, that is modern and clear, 4K, I'm using the modern technology and I think that is what we are looking for at the Darren Zami. I did pass by the Grosway ground mm -hmm. just to come up to date with what all the works. Yeah. Um, that and the Menuville Park, especially requested by the ICC, as two practice areas. Absolutely. What's uh, the development of those two areas? Well, the proximity of those two venues have, have really lent itself to ensuring that uh, everything is in a central location. Um, the Grosley playing field is a field that uh, I would have enjoyed in terms of my sports development and a lot of our talent has come from that community and uh, for the entirety of of their existence we've never had proper facilities in terms of a cordon off area an area that you know there will be comfort in terms of these international players coming in having a practice a practice session with privacy and with the World Cup, it was incumbent upon us to ensure that we bought up that entire area in terms of putting a perimeter wall. And of course, in the long term, ensuring that we have a transition to a mini stadium. So uh, proper sitting, proper change rooms, and the dynamics that would ensure that the venue could be used for other activities locally and sub-regionally. Um, the Mindafili Park is another historic ground. Um, for cricket development and it already afforded the privacy because it was caught enough and we figured the work that was required in terms of the pavilion, uh, the players area, um, the, the pitch and outfield was something that the ICC and Cricket West Indies really wanted us to work on and so we've done a lot of work um, at the, the Mindafili Park and as a government we know the importance of nighttime cricket at the Mindafili Park and so the lights are going to be installed LED um, with the transition to solar as well. Now the key there mm -hmm. when the workup is all over the maintenance the, the, the discipline mm -hmm. of, of the ordinary man to respect a lot of money is being spent let's take care of this it belongs to me. Absolutely and we as a government we've recently implemented a field maintenance, uh, management and maintenance policy. And the policy has been passed and we've passed it on to all the uh, sports fraternity. So we'd have the Cricket Association understanding how or what we expect in terms of the maintenance of these facilities. Maintenance is, is costly as well. And that is why we felt it very necessary for Grosley, for a community 
that uh, houses almost 40,000 people, a community that have 40,000, uh, a population of 40,000, to be able to get gate receipts, finally. And so they would not have to uh, trouble their MP and the Ministry of Sports to ensure that the maintenance of their facility uh, is, is, is done. And in addition to that, the perimeter wall would also allow for advertising bays to be erected so individuals such as Coca-Cola, Blue Waters and other private companies can actually rent a bay uh, to contribute towards the, the maintenance of the facility and we'd see a similar activity at Darren Sami and we are certainly hoping in the not too distant future that many of our other venues would be given that consideration. People hearing all what's happening, all mm -hmm. what is to happen mm -hmm. is probably saying I wonder what's the bill? Mm -hmm. um, what is the government um, sort of earmark for spending, mm -hmm. not just on the Darren Sami, on the, on the entire responsibility of hosting? Absolutely, and people would have heard figures like $300 million invested for Barbados. Um, we know that uh, um, Trinidad would have had something way over $100 million. And uh, we know St. Vincent is invested in lights and so many different dynamics, and uh, the bills are exorbitant. And you would have heard that the St. Lucia government, we are investing $80 million. And it is not just for the venue. It's not just for the venues, the free venues. There are lots of logistics when you're developing a country ahead of a World Cup, including the communal, the advertising, the marketing, the security. And of course, you know, in terms of the health care, the health and the welfare of all the individuals, these things cost money and so you would see a lot of investment into the medical aspect of hosting the World Cup and uh, the 80 million we're, we're certainly hoping that beyond the World Cup we indicated that some of the other venues in St. Lucia, the Philip Marsley grounds, the Marshall grounds, the VG playing field critical to the development of sport overall in St. Lucia will be given attention in terms of being enclosed venues that we could use for a semi-pro cricket league, a semi-pro football league, a track and field event, and the overall development of sport and the human beings in our country. During CPL, we had a you know, washout. Mm -hmm. um, what's been done in that area to, to improve the drainage? Well, this was a very tough situation for St. Lucia. Um, we, had, we had a number of challenges at the Darren Sam in terms of the drain. Uh, from the evaluation we did, we figured that we needed to increase the capacity of our drains. Um, we also needed to do a lot of work um, on maintaining the, the top, the, uh, getting the topsoil, a layer of soil that could absorb um, the sand, absorb as much of the water as possible. Uh, but we really had challenges in terms of time. We had a situation where January uh, was a very rainy month. And so it really delayed some of the interventions we would have wanted to do on the drain, but we're very confident that the interventions that we've done on the Darren Sami Cricket Ground in terms of the drain would yield some very, very good results and we would see more efficient draining at the Darren Sami ahead of the World Cup. Uh, <laughs> what sort of, of, of money being spent on, on, on the roads, the, yeah. the better, uh, better rest of the roads, the, the Caimanje, etc.? So when people speak of $80 million and they say that, that is so much and, and that sort of thing, it, uh, the, the cost of all the infrastructural external works just preliminarily in terms of you have the road from the, the fire station in Grosley, which is Massad, um, into Beau into Kaimaji, ending at the entrance of Lafay, the Muslim Father's Hall in that area. And of course, we're looking at the Belarusa Road, which is from uh, across the marina all the way into Beau and the surrounding areas. We have a couple of corvettes that we have to build. We have the bridges. We have a couple of bridges that we have to do, the widening of that road. And of course, the Norbe Corinth Road, um, another aspect of ensuring that there's an easier access, easier flow of traffic, the hairpin bend in, in, in Kaimaji. We're looking at over $10 million invested in the infrastructure in and around this area. And the $10 million, I think it's, it's worth it considering the influx of persons living in Beau and surrounding communities and the amount of events we are expecting, not just the World Cup, but the West Indies cricket and, and other um, 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 activities happening in, in, in Beau And so uh, we, we have started a lot of that work. I'm happy that you were able to see uh, the amount of work and we continue to ask people to be patient with us as we do those interventions and uh, we are working on the, the flooding issues as well that plague the Beau community all in one, uh, in one uh, sort of ambition to develop the community 
of books issue and growth in it. But what you're hearing about booking? So. Very, 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 very good. We did a simulation about two months ago in terms of the uh, sales for the Darren Sammy. All but one game was sold out at Darren Sammy in terms of the interest that will be garnered from uh, the diaspora, especially um, in New York, um, in uh, Florida and surrounding states. Um, in terms of the British people that we're expecting in Europe, the Europeans who are actually coming in to St. Lucia, the interest of uh, enjoying the sea and sand and not just the cricket in St. Lucia, uh, it is absolutely very encouraging. Right, a key question that is being asked up to today, mm -hmm. availability of tickets mm -hmm. for Lucia. Well, you see, we have a culture of St. Lucians waiting last minute. Uh, I'm going to announce again that we do have the tickets available online. Box uh, office also? Box office. Well, well, it's not opened right now. Um, again, we do not have a culture of persons uh, purchasing tickets very early. Um, we are going to be announcing exactly when uh, it will be opened at the Darren Samir and the venues around St. Lucia. But for now, the tickets can be purchased online. The Cricket West Indies have, announced, have made that announcement. ICC made that announcement. So you could actually go on right now. You can log on and get your tickets for cricket. And I would advise St. Lucians to do that sooner rather than later. Now, tough game in Trinidad, West Indies versus New, New Zealand. Zealand. You've looked at the, spi the fixtures. Right. <laughs> I see they've added uh, another 2,000 seats at, at at uh, Brian Lara. Mm -hmm. Are you adding any more seats here? Well, for now, no. What we, 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 we are satisfied with the capacity. Um, based on what we see happening over the next month or two, we will decide how we, we, we augment what we currently have. And the capacity officially is what? It is between 12,500 and 15,000. We can go up to 15,000 at the Darren Sammy. Um, uh, we have had experiences where we've been very close to that. We're expecting that uh, during the business end of the tournament. Um, and we do have some wiggle room and uh, our plans to ensure that if this is happening, that we really uh, make all the provisions for as many patrons to be at the Darren Sammy. The last time you, you actually brought in seats. Yes, exactly. So this is the plan B so that we're speaking option, about. Yeah. Yes, so we have now, that as an option. You, know, you talked about the two important games. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, you get, you're hoping that you get in the Western East, that is, mm -hmm. will get into to the Super 8. Absolutely. And then, um, any idea of what may come this way? Well, the, the, the way the fixtures are, the fixture is actually set, we will be expecting that the England game will be played in St. Lucia and we're expecting an India game. With everything holds true. We know for a fact that uh, the, the old axiom cricket is a game of, of uh, shifting fortunes and glorious uncertainties <laughs> hold true. But we do not see uh, a situation where in the, the, the Super 8, uh, where India, the West Indies and England do not get through. Um, and so we certainly hold, we wait with bated breath to see how it pans out. But the way it is all laid out, we're expecting to have some huge games at the Darren Sammy. What kind of money at the end of it all, mm -hmm. um, in the countries that host, mm -hmm. um, may get back from the West Indies board. What, 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 what sort of a sharing um... from the West Indies board? Well, I don't have those figures right now. Um, well, there will be. There will be. There will definitely be. Um, we we certainly uh, waiting on the final analysis from these individuals. We got some preliminary uh, reports, some preliminary figures uh, in terms of what would be made holistically at each venue. Um, uh, we wait to see it in actuality and we expect some returns for St. Lucia. And as I said earlier, um, this project, this hosting, is something that we believe in the next 20, 30 years will continue to accumulate the, the, the cash back, the rollover effect of hosting an event as, such as the Cricket World Cup. And two days before May 15th, mm -hmm. you, you'll be ticking off things that is being completed. Absolutely. Out we've, of the way. We've been ticking off a number of things um, almost weekly um, at this venue and uh, we still have so many people at work. We've seen the numbers going down as more is achieved. The roof uh, seems to be well done. Um, a lot of the, the, the external works will be done um, from next week. Um, and so I am certainly uh, very encouraged by what I see at Dance. Is it challenging to take down the pylons? Absolutely, it's a, it's a challenge, but we definitely have competent workers to, to get it done. 
um, and uh, we are going to you're going to see this done. I'm going to be in the venue when it's happening uh, because it's a sight to see. At Corin Flame Field, we just did, we did the installation and it was really, really a treat uh, to see how cranes could really move things from one spot to another. Right, there's normal practices that have generators here mm -hmm. for the television, but is there discussions with Lucilec and, 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 and Wasco regarding water and, and things like Absolutely. that? Absolutely. We had challenges a few months ago, well, about a month ago with water up north. And uh, I think all the, the communities up north had this situation to, to, to deal with from Wasco. And so we had continuous conversations with them in terms of alleviating uh, some of their, their issues. Um, that has been by and large solved. We still have some issues that we are dealing with. Um, uh, obviously, we'd have um, in, in discussions with the LOC individuals from infrastructure who have the sole responsibility of engaging WASCO and engaging FLU and ensuring that you know the technology and the, the internet uh, are done properly. So that is the role of the LOC as well. And what ICC demands in terms of medical facilities here? Absolutely. Uh, we, we, we've done that as part of the assessment that before and we've put in all the work and again once the venue is turned over uh, that, that is part of the analysis when the officials from ICC, along with the local organizing committee and Cricket West Indies, do their walk through. Um, and, uh, safety and security is a huge part of what is expected and the work has been done for that as well. Right, and I see at the back of, of, of the media box mm -hmm. where, where you can see there's been an, an, an extension built. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the cover art. The media. media, that is some of the work done for the media personnel that we're expecting in St. Lucia as well. Um, uh, we have, as I said, over we're expecting over 140 of them on island. Um, and so we've, we've, uh, we've gone the extra distance to make it as comfortable for them in terms of uploading their stories, in terms of the technology, the bandwidth that they need to make it extremely efficient for the rest of the world to know what is happening at the Dance Army.